Click Dork back again and we are continuing my series on click application automation. We're going to focus on doing backups today. In my last session on debugging, I kind of used the illustration from this requirement. Uh, so I wanted to kind of walk through the whole thing from soup to nuts for you and put together all of the different learning we've had so far. So first of all, I'm using a scheduled start for this task because I want to automate my backup. Well, what am I backing up? I'm backing up a really, really important application called Technology Alliances, which is something that I'm working on daily. And I realized, oh my goodness, I don't want to have to right click on the application in my hub and look at it and export it and deal with that because frankly sometimes I get too busy the phone might ring and I don't have a copy so I want to ensure that I've got a backup copy I don't want to have thousands and thousands of these backup copies so what I've done I'm going to export this application to um, my github repository and I've got a number of variables I would set here um, for who my user is, which repository I want to use, etc, etc. If you're familiar with GitHub, this will make sense to you. Um, whether you're familiar or not with GitHub, I want you to understand that I'm using the path as the file name. So my application is Technology Alliances, and it's going to be a QVF file, obviously. I've got this branch here, and branch is um, something in GitHub where I can have multiple splits. And what I've done is I've created a branch for each day number of the week. And I wanted to be able to tie this with variables here just to kind of show you this because then in my next step it's going to get a little bit more complicated. Um, but what I've done is I've created a variable and if I look at this variable and I edit the formula, you'll see that basically now I've said, hey, I want the date now and I want it in a week day number format so it's 0 through 6 and so I create that variable and under variables I showed you that you could always go into there and look for help information on what the formats would be for these types of things so once I set that up and once I do this export of the app to base 64 which is always without data I'm simply gonna save that off to my github repository this is automated, it's scheduled, but I can go ahead and run this by hand if I want to. And I run the application and voila, it says, hey, you're done. You're good to go. Whew. I'm so glad now I can sleep tonight. Well, if you follow me at all online, you've, you've seen my post for Data on the Rocks where I walk through and I change that flow. I, I showed you step by step how to create that. And then I said, well, geez. If I can back up one really important application, wouldn't I want to back up all the applications within my space? Well, if I'm going to back up all the applications in one space, wouldn't I want to back up all the applications in all of the spaces? And so I walked you through using some of these other blocks from Click Cloud Services like list spaces. How convenient! it just goes through and looks at all of the spaces that are in your tenant and then I say go give me all of the apps that are in this space and I set this value simply by looking at the items from my list spaces and then I can choose whether I want to see the owner ID the tenant ID or whether I just use that ID which is what I've chosen and so that's going to go through and list all of the apps for all of the spaces and then in my export ooh, I don't I didn't hand pick technology alliances here I asked for that same ID um, but coming from the list app so that I'm gonna go through ID 1 and ID 2 and ID 3 and do the export for that and then I send it out to github well, I've gone ahead here and, and did something a little bit fancier for you because I know that you're trying to learn what's going on here. And instead of just using that date field variable for this, the concept is I want to hand you this template. And maybe when I hand you a template, there's hundreds 
of workflow blocks and I can't say oh gee Sally and and Mary and Bob I need you to go to these 18 blocks and hand change things so what I did instead was I created a variable that is an actually an object type of a variable and we talked about that in my variables videos and I've created a branch key value pair and in this case I am just using main um, just for the example because I'm going to be sending every single application out there and I actually need to get rid of it afterwards because uh, I don't really care to keep that all in my uh, GitHub. And then I set the user value and I set the repository value and I set this message here that hey it was automated from a backup perspective. All easy breezy right? And this should work like a charm. It should simply iterate through all spaces all apps, export the data, and run this out and in, export it to GitHub. And so I press run here, and I conveniently, holy cow, my, my poor workflow, I failed after one second here, uh, and I get an error. Well, why? Well, here's the thing, my friends. I built this workflow originally in a tenant that I am the tenant administrator for. Right now, as I moved it and I um, uploaded it to a different tenant, I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. I unfortunately don't have tenant admin rights there, and believe it or not, the very first application that gets listed is one I don't have permissions to. Oh man, I guess I. Gosh, I I, I guess I'm going to have to just go individually by hand and create a backup for each file then. Yeah, I guess that's my only option. No, 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 no. Of course, I wouldn't be doing a video about this showing you that if that were the case. What you end up doing, and I want to show you the output from this first just to save time because nobody wants to sit here uh, for three and a half minutes while it goes through and outputs all the, does all this. Um, what I've got is an output block here um, that shows me, hey, this application, sorry, you don't have permissions. This application, sorry, you don't have permissions. And it goes through for each and every application and outputs it. So instead of crashing, it lets me know, Dalton, you don't have permissions. Oh, look, I was able to back these ones up. And it goes through each one as it, as it counters it. And you'll notice that every now and then it finds another one I don't have permissions to goes through every single one of those, which is three and a half minutes to back up that many applications online from SAS. Not too bad at all. Um, and then at the end, I put a little output that says, hey, don't forget, you have a list of applications that were backed up and a list of applications that could not be backed up. And you can use those any way you want. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's come back up here. We're going to take a look at this workflow and see what I did differently. So first, I created a variable as a list that says it's not backed up. And the first thing I do is empty that list. I want to make sure that I'm starting with a clean list. And I've got one that says these are the ones that are backed up. So two separate lists. One is going to carry the apps that were not able to be backed up, one that carries the good ones. And I want you to notice here, this says clear out the list of application names that have been backed up. Well, how in the world did that get there? Well, the neat thing is that you can edit comments for every single one of your blocks. So as you're trying to get started and you're just like, I really need to get this done, go for it. You drag or drop a couple things on the screen like I did with that one application and I'm good to go. But as I start thinking, gosh, I really, I'm really creating a very complicated workflow and I had to do some debugging to figure out what to do. I better document some of this to help others understand what it is because if I share this workflow with you, which I'm going to, you're able to have that information and you know what's going on. And you come in and you say, you know what, I don't need to keep a list of what's not backed up, just throw them out. I don't need to keep the list of what is backed up, just throw that out. And you can just delete those things because you can see some pretty readable comments there. Um, I've got that same block for the GitHub variables, exactly the same approach to this um, um, is what I'm using here. 
and then I list through here. Now what you'll see differently here is instead of immediately trying to export the application, what I do is I go get the application information for it. And then I'm able to put a conditional statement in there. And let's walk through what this get app information info privileges is. If I look, take a look at this guy, you'll see that I've got, when I get application information, it returns a, an uh, object that's info and an object of metadata. I could look at all the fields and tables in the app if I want to do that, um, which is kind of cool. The important thing here is, though, is privileges. So privileges are the security permissions you have to these applications. When you right click on an application in the hub, you're going to get to see a, a menu list of things you could do depending on those privileges. The privileges, you'll notice that it looks like this list icon here, um, which is nice because once you know that that is a list, we can treat it as a list. And so when I look for what condition, I don't want an equal, I don't want a don't equal, I don't want a greater than, I don't want a contains um, uh, for text. I want the list contains condition. And I'm specifically looking for the word export. So if one of the very many privileges in the list is export, then I know I do have the proper permissions. And so the first thing I do is I go say, hey, why don't you add this application's name to this variable, which is a itself a list. So I begin acquiring, hey, this, this application's in the list. This application got backed up. This application got backed up. And oh, by the way, let me export that name with that little block that says has been backed up so that as you're looking at this and it's taking three and a half minutes or however long you'll get to see a little bit of a status so you know it's actually working you're not sitting there blind then I go export the app same as the other block except now I know it's going to work because I know I have the permissions I do exactly the same thing for github uh, the interesting thing to note here is I'm looking at these values. I'm going to look at this GitHub variables. And if I um, uh, come down to my variable GitHub values, you'll notice I can't click on user. It doesn't iterate through that, that key value pair for me. What I had to do here, and that you are going to be able to do for any of your object type variables, is simply toggle to using the JSON. So I went through this in my variables video, but I wanted to reiterate it for you. Um, so as you're getting familiar and you're thinking, gosh, I want to click down and I just pick it, some things like this aren't pickable. You're just going to have to switch your view mode, and then you can switch it back so it's nice and friendly. Um, but now the beautiful thing is, I'm going to give you this template, you can upload it, and you're not going to have to play with any block. You don't have to walk down through all of the different workflows because they're just coming from variables. If it was no, if that condition was not met and I do not have permissions to export, then all I want to simply do is put that application name out and say, sorry, you do not have permissions to back this thing up. Get over it. And then I add that name to the not backed up list. Now, why might I do that? Why am I keeping a list of what I did and what I didn't do? Well, I output that simple notification that you do or do not have uh, the permissions, and I say, hey, by the way, you've got a, a variable list here. You might want to email yourself the list of what did not get backed up. You might want to iterate through that list and create a ServiceNow service ticket for um, someone to say, look, I, I was tasked with backing everything up on the server, and you have not given me all the permissions that I need in order to do that. Or it, that list may go to someone else, or you may do any number of things, but the fact is you've got that list of what was successfully backed up and what wasn't. And again, I've already kind of showed you that output, so if I close this, it'll show you the latest run, and you'll be able to see that that's indeed what happens there. 
Um, now, how in the world, when I keep saying I'm going to give you um, this template, how in the world do I do that? Well, in any workflow, you are able to right click and say, I want to download this. And what that will do is it will dump a JSON file somewhere for you. And so what I've got is a whole bunch of downloads here, including um, that from before, and one I then renamed it to back up all spaces, all applications to GitHub. And I'm going to give you my um, GitHub repository for that. And so if I start with a brand new template, which is what you'll do on your end, you're going to create any brand new template. You can call it Dalton's Backup Workflow. You can call it GitHub Backup, whatever you want. You will simply choose Upload Workspace and then choose where you've placed that JSON file and it will load it all up for you. Well now it's going to get loaded up and you are in business. And so you'll notice here that I created that workflow as triggered. I can come in here, I can say, no, 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 I just want to run that manually, or I want to go ahead and schedule this, however you want as your uh, routine. And what you'll need to do is come down to the variables, and you'll need to place your names in these things. The only thing that you would need to do for GitHub is create that connection so that's going to go to your repository. So right here, what I'm doing is placing on the screen my repository ID, um, which is public. So if you go out to this repository, you will be able to download this JSON file that gives you this template. Whether you actually care to run it or not isn't really um, all that interesting necessarily, although you might be saying, woohoo, I could take a week off and tell my boss I spent a week uh, writing a click application automation to back up all our applications. Um, uh, but you may just want to upload that template just to walk through and see, hey, how did, how did these things get set up? And you might just want to play with it. Um, you don't even have to do the backup. Simply, you can go into any of these and just say, hey, I want to disable that block. And then it won't actually try to back up to GitHub. Um, or you can also disable the block to actually export the app so that you can play games and then take a look at the output. Would it have backed it up? Won't it back it up? Do I have permissions to all the apps? Don't I have permissions to all the apps? Etc. Hope you're learning something from this series and hope you have a great day.